Hello, everyone, and thank you for listening to the policy update that I have prepared for you. My name is Christio Kelly Bisson, and I'm a policy analyst with Seed Change, and I will be explaining some important seed policy developments that have been taking place in Canada recently. First, I would like to mention that I'm located in Sapiganakadi, a region of Mi'kma'ki, only recently known as Lunenburg County, Nova Scotia. This is on unceded and unsurrendered territory of the Mi'kmaq people, with whom I'm in a treaty relationship through the 1726 Treaty of Peace and Friendship. Also, I would like to clarify that we at Sea Change believe that the policy developments I will be discussing today pertain exclusively to settler Canada and that Indigenous nations should be able to exercise full sovereign control over their seed system without being limited by legal restrictions imposed by the settler colonial state. I'm making this recording for you today to talk about three things that we feel are important for seed savers and seed users to know about recent seed policy developments. First, I will describe policy challenges present, presently experienced by organic and ecological farmers. Second, I will describe several government processes around Canada's seed laws and regulations that are currently taking place. And finally, I will discuss upcoming policy issues and actions, uh, an action that is needed to advocate for an equitable and sustainable seed system in Canada. On the topic of present challenges, uh, we are currently facing barriers uh, to the availability of organic ecological heirloom, uh, heritage and heirloom seed, which hampers the growth of organic and ecological farmer farming in Canada. The limited availability of organic seed is resulting in over-reliance on non-organic seed and organic and ecological production. It is even resulting in reliance on imported seed for vegetable production, which is a significant barrier to local seed sovereignty. We are also facing the problem of a lack of seed that is bred for low input production, which is resulting in a yield gap for organic and ecological field crops like wheat, oats, and potatoes. Grain varieties that were historically bred for low input production, that is heirloom and heritage varieties, face barriers to common use because of their ambiguous legal status with respect to the seed regulations. And most troubling of all, recent decisions to allow industry self-regulation over the release of food produced using gene-edited crop varieties means that there is an ever greater risk of GMO, GMO contamination in organic grains. Seed change, along with partners like Farm Folk City Folk, have been working with farmers to develop grain and potato varieties that are suited for organic and ecological production practices. However, we have been experiencing barriers to getting them into circulation due to the complicated but necessary process of variety registration and certification that we were required to go through without support from public breeding institutions. So these two diagrams show what the process of bringing new grain and potato varieties into circulation looks like. On the left is for wheat and oats um, in order for them to be distributed in Canada. And for on the, on the right, you can see this is the pathway to get uh, uh, farmer bred potatoes in circulation. Um, they're onerous, they provide limited options for farmers. And we think that there are ways in which uh, you know, public institutions can help uh, make a bigger help in the release of these varieties. Um, it is a lot to handle as farmers in civil society, and uh, we hope that we can receive uh, more public support for these kinds of programs. And then, of course, uh, outside of these uh, challenges, there is also the role for civil society to defend uh, the public interest in our seed policies. Um, presently, we see that there is a problem of industry capture over the regulations. Uh, this results in preferential policy environment for agribusiness interests. It results in the degradation of public control over our food system. And there are several examples that can be looked at for, for evidence of this. Uh, public controlled seed standards and grades are currently facing potential deregulation to voluntary industry controlled labeling. We could see the elimination of public variety registration of new crop varieties. Um, we see increasing industry self-regulation 
over the release of gene edited crops. Um, there's privatization of monitoring inspection and certification and prioritization of new, variety, uh, new product releases over hazard mit uh, mitigation and increasing uh, attempts to bring Canada's policies in alignment with our export uh, partners, primarily the United States. So those are some of the policy challenges that we've been facing, um, but there are a number of ongoing uh, policy uh, changes that are, that are coming and are happening. Um, so these are the current three processes happening at the federal level around Canada's seed laws and regulations. So first, there's the seed regulatory modernization process led by the Canadian Food Inspection Agency, CFIA. Um, that is consulting on changes to be made to Canada's seed regulations. Uh, this involves all aspects of seed regulation, except for the release of GMO seeds and similar kind of products. Uh, seed change is engaged in the process of the seed regulatory modernization. Um, and we've been uh, working to make sure that recommendations are included that could accommodate farmer bred field crops and heritage and heirloom grains, and just generally defending the public interest in these seeds regulations and ensuring that uh, organic and small holder farms have a place in them. Second, there is a series of consultations led by Health Canada on the release of food produced through gene edited crops, and also by the CFIA over the release of seed varieties developed through gene editing. And uh, both institutions are preparing guidance documents on how they will be regulating such biotechnology. Unfortunately, though, Health Canada has recently decided to follow agribusiness recommendations and have ruled that food produced from gene edited crops will be handled through industry self-regulation, which is very troubling. Um, we are really concerned about this move and we hope that we get a different decision from the CFIA over the release of gene edited seed. And finally, there is a bill, uh, Bill S6 uh, in the Senate. Uh, and this bill seeks to amend the regulatory mandates of various federal departments and various acts of, uh, through various acts of parliament. Um, and these admit, uh, amendments are largely oriented towards bringing Canada's seeds regulations in line with export partner regulations, mostly the United States. And as you can see, these have a, a variety of impacts on organic and ecological agriculture um, in the specific criteria that I've listed, availability of organic seed, accessibility of certification, uh, registration of farmer bred materials, and the defense of the public interest in our policies. It is important to note uh, that in the seed regulatory modernization working group that seed changes have been part of, there was a needs assessment survey that was sent out to the public trying to get the public opinion over certain changes that could be made to the seeds regulations. They consulted farmers, seed producers, seed industry, and civil society groups like ourselves. And largely, uh, the majority of respondents are quite happy uh, with the level of regulatory quality um, in terms of like the products that are being released through these regulations are of a quality that the public is happy with, um, even though there may be some issues with uh, how the regulations are uh, made, done. Um, there is also significant um, public like public significant support for the accommodation of farmer bred varieties uh, and heritage and heirloom grains. There is uh, very little support for what some of uh, the industry proposals like the elimination of grade tables for first uh, grain seeds, the elimination of uh, uh, grade names for common seed. Uh, a lot of the grains produced in Canada are done th through common seed, uh, not through pedigreed seed and the elimination of uh, common seed grades would have uh, a real significant impact on, um, on the ability of organic uh, grain producers to be able to have the seed that they need to produce. And generally as well, there's a fair bit of disagreements um, about the idea of more alternative service delivery in our regulations. And this is basically a, a different way of saying it. It's kind of a euphemism for privatization. And uh, there's actually very little support for this. And largely this comes from uh, private industry. 
There was also a recent opinion poll uh, commissioned by the by CBAN, uh, the Canadian Biotechnology Action Network, uh, looking at the issue of the release of gene edited crops, um, the seeds and the foods, and 46% opposed the proposal to let uh, companies conduct their own safety assessments. Uh, and, and this, of course, was not really uh, an opinion that was reflected in the recent decisions to allow for the release of gene edited foods without uh, re a mandatory public regulation. Um, and we're kind of concerned that the moves that are being made by uh, Health Canada and hopefully not the CFIA, but that these kinds of moves are kind of not actually in the public interest and the public are not actually wanting these kinds of changes. So in order to, like, to summarize kind of the developments that are taking place right now, we actually have not a whole lot of good news um, really on the availability of organic seed and ecological seed. Um, we're seeing very limited progress. Um, so far in our participation, we're seeing that there could very well be a pathway for heirloom and heritage seeds, uh, but it's not clear how that will be done. Um, and it's not clear that the way that we've proposed that it be done in a way that is sustainable and equitable for farmers and eaters uh, is accepted. Um, we're hearing some suggestion that there could be elimination of common seed grades, which would be a significant problem for organic grain producers. Um, and there's uh, been very little, uh, if not much attention at all, really to supporting uh, organic and ecological seed development and production. And that's a real concern for us. However, we are quite happy to see that at least heritage and heirloom grains could be something that is accommodated in the, the new regulations. Um, in terms of accessibility of organic certification, uh, we see limited progress on this. Um, the, the seeds regulations and the consultations done around that are, there's nothing basically being done on this, except for seed certification through the conventional means may be streamlined a little bit. Um, but that's, that's not much to help the organic sector. Um, in terms of registration for farmer bread variety, uh, varieties that like say we work on in, in seed change, um, largely what we're seeing is that uh, there will be status quo on the handling of these kinds of varieties, um, but we've been provided uh, some more details on how informally these can be helped through the variety registration system. So we're seeing li limited uh, progress on this area as well. But in terms of the defending of the public interest, we're seeing significant regression. Um, we're seeing uh, increased use of what's being called incorporation by reference, which is a way of saying you have documents outside of the regulations that serve as important regulatory documents that have legal standing. Um, they're not ones uh, that ultimately the CFI has absolute control over, so this is being privatized. Um, however, we're seeing that largely uh, these kinds of moves are going to like going to have CFIA control over it at least. So like they will have the final say on any documents that use are used even though they're being produced by industry. So we're concerned by that. We're concerned that uh, we're seeing uh, greater authority delegated to private interests over regula regulations like seed certification. Um, whereas we would rather see, you know, public uh, democratically accountable institutions responsible for these kinds of service roles. So going forward, um, the seed regula regulatory modernization process is not over. There's still a fair bit to come. Um, there's going to be new series of consultations, what are called task teams, where uh, experts, farmers, and industry leaders, and civil society groups come together and speak about specific topics. Um, they're going to be talking about the common seed issue, uh, seed testing, info and labeling, and imports and exports. Um, and then these will lead to recommendations that are made to a working group that we sit on that will make recommendations to the CFIA, who will then decide how they, reg uh, they change the uh, amendments to the regulations. And this will take place between now and uh, the spring of 2013. And what we're expecting is that in the spring of 2013, there will start a process of public consultations uh, broadly throughout Canada uh, where everyone will like farmers and, and consumers and everyone will be welcome to provide input on the policy proposals that are proposed by the CFIA. Um, 
and uh, and then once that process is complete, there will be a pro like the the changes will be put in the Canada Gazette for a period of time, subject to further consultation, and then ultimately become the new regulations. And that'll likely be happening around 2024. For the gene edited crops, um, Health Canada has has made their decision. We will be uh, continuing to push back on the on, on that decision um, and the CFIA will be uh, releasing their guidance documents in June. Um, we've been invited to listen to a presentation on how they will be doing that and we're hoping that there will be um, continued public control over the release of genetically modified uh, seed in that decision. So uh, here's hoping. But there is a lot of action that is needed still. Um, outside of these consultations, we need the public to be engaged in this, and especially uh, we've seen underrepresentation of ecological and organic farmers and smallholder farmers, especially. Um, so, largely, what we would like to have is a, a conversation among civil society groups like Farm Folk, City Folk, and other partners around Canada about uh, how to consult with farmers and gardeners, growers, eaters, seed savers on how they would like to be engaged in these sorts of issues, like what kind of pathways of information can we provide them and what kind, how we can be uh, collecting information about what policy alternatives would be preferred. Um, so sharing information and in, in a collaborative process of uh, developing policy alternatives and assessing the impacts of existing uh, policy proposals. Um, we would like to see a coordinated effort by civil society to develop policy alternatives to inform our common advocacy and be working together because it's clear that uh, industry has a very dominating voice over how these amendments take place. Um, and of course, it would be great to have a conversation about uh, how to coordinate all of our groups to engage in public mobilization to let policymakers know what uh, the Canadian public wants and what kind of, uh, uh, of ways that we would like to see a just and sustainable seed system produced. So ways conventionally that are, are used to uh, influence uh, the development of these kinds of policies are to get, uh, contact ministers and MPs. So we want to see more of this kind of action, but I think it's also important to encourage um, farmer participation, especially uh, because the CFI re really has a concern to listen to, to farmers. Um, and especially, like I said, uh, organic and ecological farmers, smallholder farmers have been underrepresented in these consultation processes. So I think there's a real need to find a way to engage these uh, sectors uh, much more and ensure that their voices are heard in these processes in public consultation. So these, these are kind of the points that I, I kind of wanted to bring up and share. Um, I look forward to hearing any uh, potential questions. I'm uh, reachable. Um, David will share my contact information and uh, I look forward to hearing from you. I'm happy to, to answer any questions about this. Uh, we're open to any conversations about how to collaborate and uh, facilitate engagements with, with members. Um, to, to about these very important policy developments. Uh, it seems like there's a really big uh, push uh, by private industry to get the kinds of policies that are preferential to their interests. Um, so far, I've seen they have a lot of power, uh, but it's not an inevitability. Uh, the public can push back. Uh, we can make our voices heard and we can make sure that the the lawmakers know that we want a policy alternatives. We want a different system, one that is just and sustainable and uh, puts people over uh, the profits of private industry. Uh, thank you for your time. And I look forward to hearing to you, uh, hearing any questions from you.